Chris, a contract extension until the summer of 2025. You must be delighted. Yeah, I'm buzzing. Really happy to get it over the line. Um, certainly the way this season's gone for me, obviously back in the team and, and enjoying my football. And to me, it makes you know complete sense to sign the contract. Uh, an amazing football club and in an area which uh, me and my partner love. So, um, yeah, really happy to get it over the line. You clearly feel that the future is bright here, Chris. Yeah, definitely. I think you look at the way the, the club have tied down a lot of the younger lads, you know, Brooksy, Travs, Lewis Cook, um, shows that people want to be part of this journey and, and enjoy it here and want to, you know, progress their career here. And and yeah, I'm sure there's um, there's many others that would love to do the same. And I know it's a really good change room and um, yeah, it's, it's going to be exciting to be part of this journey for the next couple of years. You've spoken about those two players. Dom Solanke, Lewis Cook, Adam Smith also has signed contract extensions. Lots of players showing commitment to the club and the club showing commitment to you as well. Exactly. I think it's, um, of course, it's important that you, you know, show your worth on the pitch and, and ultimately you get rewarded um, with stuff like this. And I think all of the names that you mentioned uh, for a couple of seasons now have shown their real ability and, and what they can bring to this team. And, and I'm, I'm glad that I've got to you know, showed out over the last couple of games and, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Spoken about your partner there, Chris. Things are looking good for you away from football as well. I know you got engaged in the summer. How important is it to be settled as a footballer? Yeah, 100%. It's something that I haven't really experienced moving too much. Um, you look at someone like Kiefer Moore, who's been here, there and everywhere. Um, and I think it can be quite difficult to, you know, suddenly you get settled in one place and, and you're off to another place. And I've been really settled down here for a couple of years now. Um, like I said, my partner loves it. We've got a, a dog that we uh, that keeps us on our toes. But no, um, it's certainly an area that that we both love. And, and like I said, it's good when the, the football goes nicely alongside that. Not long ago, you were a gardener playing for North Green for United Reserves. Chris, you've certainly come a long way in a short space of time. Yeah, no, it's been um, it's been an amazing journey. You know, to think a couple of years back, I'd be you know back in the prem well in the Premier League full stop. Um, yeah, I wouldn't have believed anyone that would have told me that. Um, of course, a lot of ups and downs um, along the way, no difference to anyone else. But yeah, it's been quite a unique journey. Obviously, coming from North Greenford, um, not many people end up coming from that sort of level and playing at, playing at this level. So um, no, I've loved every, every moment along the way and, and hoping to have you know, a lot more special memories. Six games into the Premier League season. Give us your thoughts on how it's gone. Yeah, I think um, I think we're in a really good place. Um, you know, the first game of the season, we got off to a flyer um, in front of the home fans, and of course, it was always going to be a tough month with the the games we had. Um, obviously, two away games against arguably two of the best teams in in the world, in my eyes, um, which was going to be tough. But no, we got got things back on track at the weekend. Um, a massive win, which for me, showed everything about our team, you know, the character, the resilience. Um, I'm sure a lot of teams 2-0 down away from home would almost go into their show a little bit, but we was never going to, and ultimately we got the rewards for it. Um, so now I think we're definitely on track, and hopefully we can keep getting some wins under our belt. The reaction of three of the new players, Neto, Ryan Fredericks, Marcus Tavernier, to the Nottingham Forest win, Chris, shows that players are really buying in very quickly to the ethos of this club. 100%. I think, um, yeah, there's been, for me, every lad that's come in has, you know, bought into it straight away, um, made themselves like a presence in the change room, which is important, you know. Um, I think the games do come thick and fast, probably not as fast as last season, but, you know, it's important that you kind of get used to the way we play um, as quickly as possible. And, and ultimately, it's a very good group to come into. Um, I think everyone makes each other feel really welcome and, that's what's also unique, you know, um, it's a very comfortable place and good environments come into and and I personally think that's why lads do settle so quickly and can, you know, get to their, their very best so quickly. In an interview at the start of the season, Chris, you said you had some unfinished business in the Premier League. You've started all six games. You've always craved a run of games. Yeah, I think um, it's something I've always wished for. Um, I never sort of lose belief in my in my ability and, and what I can bring to this team. But of course, like anyone, you need, you know, a good opportunity and a good run of games to, to get your best. And, and I feel like now I've put myself in a position where I've kind of got myself in the team and hopefully I can stay in the team for as long as possible. And 
contribute as much as I can. Um, but no, I'm really enjoying it. Um, like I said, the season's gone well for me so far, but we're only six games in and I've got plenty more to, to give individually and, and hopefully as a team we can, like I said, keep picking up wins along the way. You've spoken very candidly in the past, Chris, about social media. You've been vilified on there. Now you're being lauded on there. Do you still look at it? No. Um, of course, it's sometimes tough when it's, um, you know, right in, your, right in front of your face in certain moments. But um, for me, I think I've always taken the rough with the smooth. Um, so for me, of course, when when there's people not so positive towards you and on the back end of a bad game or uh, a run of bad form. Um, for me, you've got to take, like I said, take the rough with the smooth because there's going to be good moments along the way and there's going to be, like you said, people that um, sing your praises. And I think you need to try and stay in quite a neutral mindset of not getting too high, not getting too low. And I think that's one thing that I've kind of got better along the way, you know, um, being being more level-headed and not, not being so emotional with good games and bad games. and. And I think that's kind of served me well so far. A lot is made of mental health in, in this day and age, Chris. How did that affect your mental health? I think it's such a, you know, it's so easy for people to talk about, but it's such a big thing. Um, nowadays, you know, there's people taking their lives every day um, because of the negativity um, just out there in the open. And I've always said before, I think, you know, the world needs to be a more positive place and we need to look after each other and put our arm around each other sometimes because something as simple like that can go a massive way and um, just like in any walk of life people want happiness and positivity around them and football's no different um, of course it's not always going to be like that you're going to have bad games bad results but yeah I think if we could appreciate each other more and be be kinder as such towards each other I think yeah I think the football environment would be um, a lot healthier. You're still only 24, Chris. Like you said, lots of highs, lots of lows in a short space of time already. What advice would you give to a young player wanting to be a professional footballer? The advice I'd give, which for me has um, worked well for me, is just that resilience to never give up. I think there's been moments in my life, um, certainly when I was younger, where you know a different me would have gone into my shell and maybe called it a day and knocked it on the head. and. I'd be lying if I said there wasn't moments where that did happen and there was conversations where I sort of said to my mum and dad, look, you know, football's not for me. I'm, you know, I've come as far as I can come and I want to, you know, enjoy school and enjoy going out with my friends and partying with my friends and stuff like that. And I think it has been tough at times, but ultimately I've always had that bit inside of me, um, which has been wanting to pro uh, prove people wrong. and especially from a young age where I have been turned away from a couple of clubs and I've always had that bit that wants to prove them people wrong and, um, and now I like to think I've put myself in a position where I've, I've done that. Chris, there's a small matter of a World Cup finals on the horizon, which is why your club form is going to be so important heading into that squad announcement. Yeah, it's going to be really important. Um, we've got a very good squad, um, a lot of young lads in the setup, a lot of experienced lads and ultimately we've got a team that over the last couple of seasons has been very successful and um, obviously qualifying for a, a Euro Championship in itself was something beyond belief for some uh, Welsh fans and and now to qualify for a World Cup for the first time in 62 years just shows what a big thing it is and for me to be part of that and and like you said to hopefully make sure my club form is good and hoping that I've got a run of games going into that and put myself in the best possible position um, but no, it's going to be really exciting. My family are really looking forward to it. And and it's an occasion which, again, if someone was to say you're, you're playing in the World Cup um, at 24, again, I probably would have laughed in their face. But um, no, really excited for it. And, and hopefully we uh, we do well.